So our next speaker is Miguel from Trust You, and he will tell you about processing a large amount of uh, hotel reviews with Python. And I guess he'll just start when he's ready. Mm, thanks. Um. Okay, looks okay. Yep. So thanks for being here, my talk. Um, uh, uh, I should have changed the title a little bit. I think is you won't expect like a hardcore NLP talk, and there's gonna gonna, gonna be a lot of code in this talk. Most like a you know design and architectural view of how we do things. Trust you. Um, so starting with the normal slide of about me, um, I'm Colombian, like the last speaker. So I don't. I think there's an organizational reason behind two Colombian speakers one after the other. Uh, I'm a Neovelina. I just came here two months ago, um, before I was in, in Munich. And I work for Trust You, which is a company in Munich, as a data something. I wear many hats, so sometimes I do basic data pipeline processing, and other time I work with machine learning a little bit. I will work in Python around two years only, so I'm kind of embarrassed for that. But um, so, so far, so good. I really love the working with Python. And uh, before coming in Munich, I founded the Munich Data Geeks. I, uh, it's, I like to call it like the largest machine learning meetup in Germany. Probably the guy from Berlin is going to disagree on that, but it's actually true. Um, I can prove it. Like, like we had one of the talks that was presented yesterday, we had, we had it uh, some months ago in Munich before. Just saying that. Anyways. Uh, okay, so the agenda. Um, three things. First, I'm gonna talk the problem description, basically what we do. Then the tools we use to do that, that include Python and other technologies. So that's like the how. And finally, I'm gonna show a sample application where we sort of use what I just described and, and just a technology, technology demonstration. Um, so trust you. Um, we, we have three products. Uh, the company has three products. One is uh, social media monitoring. Uh, there is surveys, and, and we have uh, data, uh, something we call the meta review, which is what I'm going to talk about it. We work for hotels, so we all the, all the things we do, we do it for hotels. And in for the meta review widget, or the product I'm going to show you, uh, we talk about the pro th this problem. So. We work from uh, uh, with reviews from users, and you know you probably use something like Yelp or uh, Foursquare, and you go to a place, you write a review or, or something. That same thing happens with hotels. Uh, some people go to hotels, they don't like something, they write about it, but they use different websites um, and they use different languages. So the goal of the company is to create a summary uh, of all hotels uh, uh, on the planet based. On the on the on what people talk about it, so we create this um, widget. We call it. It's a piece of HTML. When we try to summarize um, um, the hotel, so if you see it in the in the upper left corner, there's a score that we calculate based on all the average score of all the website we crawl, and then we have like summary sentence. Um, we try to get the most important information uh, from 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 the hotel. So in this case, it's a hotel. I don't know if you, you. I don't know if you can read that, but it's in the Las Vegas Strip. It's a it's a hotel in Las Vegas, it's a design hotel. We also do some ranking. So we rank hotels based on what people say in different categories, like design hotel. Probably, I cannot just make it, it's an HTML, sorry. Um, and we have some good to knows, and we show um, highlights from reviews. We also get these uh, pieces of text, probably you can read here, that's called, we call it snippets. It's a um, thing we extract from reviews. So, particular pieces of tech that we find interesting. So in this case, perfect for design enthusiasts, or great restaurant, huge bathroom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we also provide this as data, as an API, and so in mostly to uh, OTA, or online travel agencies. For example, this is one for, for Hickmonk. Another one that use our data is it's, it's, it's Kayak and so the other like, f f famous uh, web search engines that I cannot say. Um, so you can imagine that um, the, doing this or getting all this 
Uh, oh, sorry, we also support uh, many languages. So it's not only for English, we support uh, Thai, Chinese, and so on and so forth. So we take all review from all languages and we put it here in a summary. Um, so you might imagine to, to sort of accomplish this, we need to do several particular tasks like crawling, um, do we do some natural language processing or semantic analysis or we extract, I mean, peop some people are talking about the bar room or from the restaurant and so on. So we have to deduplicate hotels, reviews. The duplication is when you have already something in your database and you don't want to write it over after you crawl. Then we have ranking recommendation and other machine learning uh, problems that you might be familiar with. Um, the stack, simple stack. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about the technology, but we have two main layers. It's one is the batch layer, and, and the batch layer, sorry. Uh, and uh, in that, we receive data from the crawling, we process it, and to do that, we use Hadoop. And after that, we write that data into normal databases that are then are read by the application uh, layer that is also Python uh, applications like in Flask or Django and et cetera. And I'm going to talk to you um, about the, the, the bad layer model in this talk. Um, so some numbers to, to talk a bit. We support 25 different languages. We have in our database more than half a million more properties. Um, we crawl daily around 30 million reviews. Um, we have to deduplicate those reviews against another 250 million of reviews that we have already in our database. So yielding um, around 200,000 daily new reviews to process. Um, and you know what that means, right? That means a lot of text. We have to work with a lot of text. And, uh, and working with such a large amount of text basically means I mean, you can boil down everything to four things like you have to clean, filter, join, and aggregate. And that's like even machine learning, you can boil down to, to, to sort of like these actions. And when I start telling you how it works, you start like creating a, a sort of like a graph. So first you have to crawl the website, then you have to clean it or extract the text from it. Um, and then you have to do maybe further cleaning, applying some machine learning, um, some NLP and data from so these different steps are put into another one that does something else. Um, and the steps might be in different technologies. Um, and we have it actually in that way. Um, out of requirement, out of that you grew up your environment sort of naturally. So it's not limited to Python, for example. The steps can be run and hopefully run in parallel, so you can crawl different web pages at the same time. You, you shouldn't have like a linear thing because then it will not take forever. And then, and the steps have complete dependency of, uh, amongst them. So you, 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 uh, one step will depend on several, and other step will depend on those. So sort of create. So you have several requirements. First one is the technology one. How are you going to process what, in which language you're going to write those, uh, those tasks? Then you have to look for a way to parallel. I already say we use Hadoop, but you know, pretend I didn't say that. So you have to look for a way to, to, to parallel this. Um, uh, and then you have to look for a way to sort of uh, manage those dependencies, or in other words, do some sort of orchestration. Um, so talking about the technology, I'm not going to go into Python. I know we all love Python. That's why we are here. So I'm not going to go and say Python is the best. And we, but we use some, a lot of, of Python in our code base. I would say around 80%. And, and why? Because it has NumPy, it has a, an LTK, and many, many libraries that are useful to actually do what we do. And what is, what is, what is nice about it is in something that was previously mentioned in here is that uh, we don't have this two language problem. So we can do our prototyping in, in, in Python, and then we move straight to production or, well, obviously after a prototype you have to clean up some stuff, but then it's, you use the same language to, for both. And for doing next, uh, this, we use IPython or Jupyter and, and, and other technologies uh, together, and then we move that to, uh, to our production code. And that's very nice. I, th and that's, I, I think it's now one of the big wins uh, that you get when you use Python. So it's scaling. Typical, you, I mean, Hadoop is everywhere right now. Uh, who, who's familiar with Hadoop? Uh, for its, say, familiarity. Who is not familiar with Hadoop? 
Okay, so I'm going to give a fast introduction. I mean, I, I, I was, uh, I used, it's kind of hard to explain Hadoop in, in sentences, but imagine this. It's a distributed file system where you can run uh, two particular set of tasks, map and reduce. And you can write anything on top of that. So imagine a lot of machines with, deep, uh, with a file system that has, is distributed to, to main functions, and that's more or less how it works. Uh, I know it's not enough to explain Hadoop, uh, but uh, so in order to continue to the talk, let's let's say we are we are familiar with it. Um, uh, but uh, Hadoop is equals to Java, right? So I'm just say we love Python. So how do we do that? For by the way, this is the uh, picture I took uh, during the last Java meetup I went to. Um, <laughs> no kidding here. Oops. So. Python plus Hadoop. There, there, um, there are many ways to use Python and Hadoop, actually. Um, the normal, the standard one would be to use Hadoop streaming that basically allows you to run anything on top of Hadoop. So Hadoop takes char charge of sending files, giving the file to the, to the code you want. That has some overhead. But there are other way, ways like Mr. Job or OC that is a Java framework and Luigi. I'm going to talk about Luigi in a second. So, for Hadoop streaming, and that's going to be a little bit of explanation for those who are not familiar with, with MapReduce. If you're familiar with Unit Bash, that should be that's basically what Hadoop does. So you have an input that you cut into another process that we call a map. After the map that does something, uh, he generates some key and some data. That key is then sort. In this case, can be by the sort command in your in your computer, and this pass. Based on that key, all the data that belongs to that key to the, uh, reduce a, a process. And then you generate the output. That's basically Hadoop in a nutshell in your local machine. In the real life, you will run this something in the Hadoop cluster, you will run it like this. And basically, you have to also provide two different, one map and one reduce. Um, for Hadoop streaming, it can be any technology. In this example, I have um, Python. Um, and, but if, if you want to change several steps, as you just described it before, then you have to write uh, something else to, like, when you run one process, then you pass the output to the next one. And, 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 and that boils down some time to uh, just writing bash scripts. And who likes to write bash scripts? Raise hands here. Really? Really? Okay. There are people, people, so <laughs> not me. So that takes me to the to the to the next thing. How do I um, customize my? How do I orchestrate this? How do I manage all these different map and reduce steps and put it together in a nice way, sort of knit it together? And then it comes, and we start using this one year ago. Luigi, um, it's a from the description. It says it's a Python Python framework for data flow definition and execution. In plain English, it means that using Python you can describe a da data pipeline. Um, uh, flow in any technology, basically. Um, and we've used it for a year, and we're pretty happy with it. It gives you dependency definition. It comes straight with Hadoop integration. You don't have to. You, you don't need to use Hadoop to use Luigi, but it comes straight away. You can use uh, you can use Hadoop or HDFS. It gives you an object-oriented abstraction to work with. It allows parallelism, resume, failed jobs, and like many things, I'm basically selling you Luigi uh, now, and then a nice command line integration. Um, and you can also visualize this. The visualization is actually not that good, but it works. Um, so an example, some code, finally. Um, this is a, 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 a um, Hadoop, uh, sorry, a Luigi task. It's not Hadoop. It's just a task that you can put together with, uh, with different ones. And it, it can run locally in your machine, on your machine with no problem. Um, and this is what it takes to write a Luigi task. And you have a parameter that is automatically, it becomes a command line parameter. You can use it straight from the command line, and you can pass it if you run this. Each function has a requirement that can be a, another task. So that's the way you put together the dependencies. In this case, it's a, imagine it's another task that gives a, a, a text. I'm going to show uh, how to run this. Um, then um, the output, each task uh, produces an output. And that output is then passed to the next task. Um, 
and each function has a run where you write your, your business logic. Um, if you want to run this in Hadoop Map Reduce, it's just basically the same. It's the same example, the same logic. The only thing is that um, you have to provide a, a mapper and a reduce. Um, and you can have like this data flow visualization. I'm going to um, go out to the presenter mode and going to show you how to run this uh, easily. And let's make it bigger. OK. OK. It's not working. OK. Here you go. I have no idea why it doesn't work. OK, now it's, it's yeah, it's appeared to be working. Okay, so okay, let's go here. I'm I'm trusting in the Wi-Fi now, so please. Oh, thanks. No, oh, well, yeah, it's kind of like sad. Let's put it in the middle here. Oh, well, the sort of doesn't work as expected with the um with the uh, this. Maybe I can can switch uh, the appearance to what are you what you put this the topics or I, I just want to change the color but I okay maybe there's no another one to foreground backgrounds put it uh, white or something like that oh crap anyways just bear with me uh, so uh huh it's called work out, right? Oh, board to back. Cool. Oh, uh, actually, I don't know where. Where is where is the code I'm supposed to show now? <laughs> That's it's a bit embarrassing. I'm supposed to have this here, but uh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's called the demo. Uh, okay, let's see. It's okay. It's not there. <laughs> oh yeah, I found it. Oh, cool. Okay, now I know it's here. Uh, so this is a a demo. It's basically the same code that you showed. So input test is a a, a Luigi external task. Basically, gives me a HDFS target. It's a file on HDFS, um, and this is the same code that you showed. Basically, that's the only difference. In the small uh, amount. If I want to run this, it's just um, um, demo. And what it's telling me is all the parameters it comes automatically and what tasks I can run in this case. So if I give word count, um, it will uh, sorry, it will fail, of course, uh, because I haven't passed any parameter to that to that thing. So I will paste parameter today is 2015. 05, what day is today? 30. Yeah, okay. And it start running. And now there's a map reduce um, job running right now with this only piece of code. Um, and talking about visualization, you can, um, this is production data. This is actually um, something that is running right now. This is live thing. I'm going to look for a task so how you can check all the different tasks, tasks are running. So, you know, they update a database. Generally, these tasks are, are more cool to show. And this is a, a example of a workflow I just definition. So each of these tasks are, are, are Python or other technologies. And update tasks depend on SEMA and tokenize on the tech language. And you can continue. You can create completely complex Completely complex. So really nice uh, dependency there. And you can go down and down. And it's turtles all the way down, you know? So you can go like this. These are the green thing that it means that it's done. So it's a way to sort of, you can place different, different steps. Now, interesting, you can run this locally in your machine. And you can even sort of model the data sign workflow when you have to you know, do cross-validation or uh, feature extraction and so on. Well, let's go back to um, to the slides. Um, so, mm, so Luigi, 
in summary, um, give us a minimal boilerplate code to define tasks. You can programmatically define dependencies, you get task synchronization, and you can wrap anything. So not only Python, you can put on top of Luigi anything. I'm gonna, um, before we used to write bash script and, 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 and using cron to run everything, that therefore that's why I hate bash scripts. Um, and do like manual cleanup and manual failure, failure recovery, and it's harder to debug this way. Uh, now we use complete nested Luigi jobs graphs. That what I mean is like sometimes the task is actually launches another Python process that runs another Luigi. So Inception, you know the the, the movie. Basically the same thing. You go inside that task, it's another graph there, and, and all the way down. It's, yeah. Through the times go uh, slow down uh, too. Uh, it has automatic automatic retries, and it's still a bit hard to debug sometimes, but it's way better thanks to the visualization and sort of like the object-oriented uh, abstraction. Um, we use it for running basically anything, standalone executables. We use it also for um, database dumps, um, general Hadoop streaming. Um, we also wrap some other frameworks. Some of the bash script we don't want to rewrite. We put it on, in, in, in Luigi as well. And we just uh, pick scripts. Um, and that's, but the, the feature is that you can wrap anything. My favorite feature is that you can wrap anything with, with Luigi. And, and, and that takes me to my next, next section. Uh, I'm going to talk about pig. Who, I'm not talking about food, no bacon. I'm talking about pig. Who's familiar with pig, not food? The programming language or data flow execution. Well, you say, I'm going to talk about an, another technology, a Java technology um, in a Python meetup, in a Python conference. So you're going to see why. Um, I believe in the right tool for the right job. In Python, we love it. It's awesome. But sometimes it's not the right tool. Sometimes you have to do some data transformation that can be expressed in a, in a more elegant manner using different, different technology. That's where PIC comes to. PIC is a high-level platform to, for creating MarmReduce programs. Um, and I'm going to show you why. PIC is kind of like a SQL-esque way of defining MarmReduce jobs. And uh, just for comparison, this is three, the same code in, 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 in SQL, in PIC Latin, which is the language that is provided to you to create that, and in Python, using map and reduce uh, abstraction. So you have SQL. Um, normal SQL, I assume most of you are familiar with SQL. It's a normal group by with a couple of aggregation functions like sum, sum and average. Pick Latin is two or three, depending how you see it. Uh, it's similar to SQL, but not the same. It's, it's not as relational as SQL. It's more like a uh, relational algebra engine. And it's translated to map reduced jobs in, in JVM, basically. That's how it works. It's converted. And this is Python. And as uh, you see, Python requires you to write two different functions and then wrap it in wha whatever framework you want, like Mr. Job or Luigi. And when this becomes more uh, complex, then you, are, you have to write more, more, more Python, and Python ends up being spaghetti code. And you don't want that. We actually had to rewrite some code to m uh, like m migrate it from, from uh, Python to pig because it was, more, it was cleaner to use it in, 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 in that way. Why, in what type of code? Well, data loading and transformation, anything that resembles sometimes a, a select or a complex merge of two different data sets might be easier in, in, in PIG. You can use other technologies, but the, the idea is that try to use the right tool for the right job. Other logic, we have it in Python. You can use PIG as a Luigi task easily, because you, in the run function, you basically launch another, um, another process, Java process running pig, and that's it. And you can define that it's not uh, sort of like recommended uh, user-defining functions as similar to the SQL one. You can define it in Python as well using Jython. So if you want to keep more logic in, in Python, you can go in that direction. Uh, and now, uh, how is time? How much do I? It's OK? Or? Oh, perfect. OK. Um, sample application. Now I want to show a um, sort of like a two different or one different uh, one uh, technology 
I don't know, demonstration. It's not a product. It's something we developed. Well, we wanted to, to do something nice. And, um, and I talked about that I was going to sort of share how we process reviews in, 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 in this talk, but I haven't mentioned reviews only in the beginning, right? So now we're going to back to the actual topic. Uh, and probably you may think, well, you know, reviews, well, there's a lot of text. They're boring. They're just there, right? And I say, well, if you look closer, no, and this is the demonstration. Who's familiar with this product? Yeah, you. So this is an awesome shirt. It's like the best shirt in the world. If you see, it's like almost five, five stars with 1,500 reviewers. So it's had to be something awesome, <laughs> right? I don't know why, how a shirt, like it has wolves, wolves. And you just check the reviews. There's a guy saying, like, when I wear this, it's like I have ninja with a AK-47, right? So, so when you see, look at closer, reviews are much more than, than just, like, facts about the product or the hotel or whatever. And um, there's a, for, 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 um, for hotels, this also happens something funny, which is the opposite, or well, not the opposite, but sometimes are things like, Haunted houses. Uh, the, the source is there, like much more uh, there. And poo in the kettle and stuff like crazy stuff. It's really crazy stuff. And I, I actually, well, so review sort of highlights not only facts about a product, but sometimes other type of information, including the uh, personality or the preference of, of the reviewers. And that's information that I don't think is being used a lot. Um, I'm going to give you the trust you top. Uh, snippets, we extract parts of uh, text from the reviews, and we sort of, when we find something funny or quirky or weird, we sort of have a database with that. And um, <laughs> it sounds weird, right? Uh, and this is what we got. Um, these actual reviewers writing this, this small text. I don't know the context, sometimes I don't remember it. Sometimes it's hard. Irish dance, where's the Irish guy? What's our Irish guy? Um, I just, hips don't lie. I just want to know what the guy was talking about, or the context of this. It's actually a, I think it's a Shakira song, by the way. Um, I, the last one I actually found out why. It, it's like hugging a bony supermodel. And it's like the guy goes to a hotel and say like, okay, the hotel is beautiful, but it's not comfy. And so he said, you know, it's like hugging a bony supermodel. She's gorgeous. But mm, you're not going to get a lot of, you know. Anyways, um, um, so this takes me to the next thing, word to back. So when I started in the company, actually one year ago, I was working my master thesis with word to back and, and, and stuff. And said, so like, why don't we, I mean, people use word, could some for word to back here? Well, then I'm going to explain a little bit about it uh, for those that are not familiar, but I said, okay, people are using word to back to train uh, in like, you know, Google News and or, uh, I don't know, Wikipedia. Let's go and see what happens when we add uh, reviews. Maybe we can get something nice or, or maybe not. And, and that's what I'm going to show you here. And so word to back introduction is a group of algorithms. It's not one technique. It's a group of models, so to say. Um, it's an instant of shallow learning. Some people sort of like talk about word to back as deep learning. It's not deep learning. You can actually, if you re actually, the, the, the authors or the author set, uh, set is not. And you can, when you actually check the code or the, or the architecture, it's just a neural net with a hidden, hidden layer and that's it. Um, you can see it as a feature learning model. So you get feature, you get um, real value. Uh, word representations, a vector representation of words. So basically, if you have any word, you get a vector that sort of like maintains some sort of concept around it. If in, in, in two, back in 2013, this was like a super huge NLP community in the machine learning, because if you apply this function uh, or this transformation or summation to the vector representing those words, you get the result of Queen. So basically, this is asking, uh, uh, a king is to a man as a woman is to a queen. And the model could answer that queen that gives that answer without knowing anything about what is female or male 
or what is a queen or a, a, uh, or, um, a king. Um, and in this, I took it from this. You totally have to check this website, web uh, blog post. It's really interesting. It explains a lot, and there's nice links there. It works like that. Once you learn the word vector, you can apply this sort of transformation, and you you get the sort of like the closest vector to the result of the transformation. Sometimes ends up being the um, the the solution or the answer you're looking for. Um, and that's basically it. I'm, I'm not going to go into details or the model because I don't have time, and I just want to show you the results, basically. What is important is that similar word gives you nearby vectors, um, and, and word to vect sort of give you that, and, 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 and that becomes really useful. You can extend that model to paragraphs and larger documents, and that's why we, we wanted to use it for, to represent hotels using um, not only all the words, uh, sorry, all the uh, reviews that are uh, created for it. So we started generating representation of hotels that kept some similarity. So you have similar hotels sort of clustered together based on the, on the reviews you, you get. Um, and luckily, there was a Python implementation for it uh, called Gensim. And we use Python and say, oh, OK, so cool. Let's put it all in together. And let's see what happens, right? And um, and this is basically the the um, what we did. In the uh, we extract the sentences uh, for from actually that's pig and, and Python, not only pig, but well, extract sentences. It's basically the same idea. You uh, we have different steps, and I put it together. We have one step that extract the sentences, another one that learn the bigram, so we can have not representation of things. Uh, like New York or Los Angeles or any other that are like words or concepts that are made out of two words. And some additional tasks that we use because um, sort of we need it. Uh, basically, what we call cluster IDs are the IDs of the hotels we use, and we only want those. Um, and this actually, the what is working in this is Luigi. Uh, the Luigi flow I just showed just, just looks exactly the same. Um, this is the code. <laughs> it's not crazy for one task, the learn model task. The same idea. You have a output. You have a, a requirement, which is the learn background task. Just I just showed you at the beginning of the talk. And then you have the run, which basically uh, runs uh, doc 2 back, which generates uh, document representations. Um, and I'm going to show you, um, going to use the notebook. Finally, this is an old version. And actually, by the way, Bokeh breaks this completely when I use it. I don't know why, but uh, just. So this is the, the same model I trained. Um, I import Word to back. I load the model I, uh, I want to use. This is how the sentence are, are laid out. So we have the ID of the hotel that we want to get the sentence for. Uh, the sorry, the model for, and then we have uh, different uh, instructions like sentences from coming from review. So one review have different sentences, so you have to separate them, right? And we do that before. Sorry. Oh sure. So you have to separate those sentences. That's basically like uh, NLP task that we run. It's nothing. We use NLTK for this, I believe. And let's see if we can get the same result from the, from instead of using Google News or or uh, Wikipedia, we can get the same result. And so what I'm asking here is the same question that you show. Is I'm asking the machine to answer the question, well, what is, uh, if a man, what is a, a, a how do I phrase that? So, so kin is to a man as woman is to, oh, it's the opposite. Well, you get it. <laughs> and um, actually, I don't get it. I get super king. I don't know why. So in this world, the review world is super king, which is cool, right? So it's not a queen, it's a super king. Feminist power. <laughs> now, but the second one is, is queen, right? So it's close. Now, you have to, the, the word queen and queen in king and queen in, in, in review world, in this hotel world, is mostly for talking about queen size beds and, you know, king size beds. So you can see there's a, a generous and, you know, other other words that 
might not be like the, the things that you're gonna think you're gonna say, okay, that might give you a result. I look, I also, something I didn't mention, I trained also vectors for the city. So I took all the reviews from one city, from all the hotels from one city, and sort of generated another vector to see, oh, maybe I can get something nice. And I, and I I'll just ask, give me the, the, the vector that is more similar to Munich. And it gives me cities like Cologne, Offenbach, Kaiserlautern, and so on. So sort of it keeps cities together, right? It's normal. Why? Because the words are, are, are sort of like, the words are, I mean, when you talk about German cities, you usually talk about the same uh, words. So like the Dome or the Marienplatz, there are many cities with Marienplatz or Marienhof and whatnot, right? So German words or names. And uh, you have Dachau and Heidelberg, Dortmund. So I say like Berlin, it's Vienna and Volgograd. <laughs> what is Volgograd? Is anyone from Volgograd here? Raise the hand, no. Russia, yeah, but it's cool or it looks like Berlin or something. I don't know. And you can also have like, um, like a sort of like sites, right? So people when write review, write about site. Oh, I went to the Marine Place, it was so awesome, I really like it. You know, something like, nothing to do with the hotel. Just, just describe the trip. And you can see like the Roman Forum give you like Smithsonian Museum, the Pantheon, the Archaeological Museum, sort of like other sites. So like the words are like clustered together in different um, sort of like concepts. And that's really nice. And I actually uh, add this. I just add Munich and drugs. See what happened. London. And where is it? Uh, Berlin was here. But it disappeared. And Kiel. I don't know why. Just ask the model. Um, I put... Something, sometimes you put something that doesn't have any, like, give you just gibberish or trash, like, for example, nothing to do with this. And you can have other music, like, the most, the closest thing to music is rap music. So a lot of people like rap music. And um, I actually uh, took different cities and tried to put it together in a, in a 2D graph using a TSNE, which is a so dimensionality reduction th kind of thing, is similar to PCA. And I used Bokeh for doing that. Uh, break the, the notebook or the old version of the notebook, and I got this. Where is it? It doesn't work that. Oh, here you are. So, this is the cluster of cities based on the reviews only, right? So, we have this one, which is basically joined together Madrid, Amsterdam, and, the, and, and Miami in, a one, in one cluster. I don't know why this is the algorithm doing this. So. Uh, and you have other like New York, Venice, and Seattle sort of together, and then you have Berlin and Prague, which sort of makes sense. They're capitals of, of states that are similar. And I spend hours doing this, you know, like putting words and see what happens and laughing about it. So we can just stay here forever. And so I don't want to do that. We have to, I have to, the next speaker comes shortly, so I have to finish. Um, so quickly. Um, So quickly, so that gives you a similarity. We have similarities for wars, for cities, and also for a hotel. So when you have similarity of hotels or, of, or a product, you can use it for non-personalized um, recommenders. So the idea is that if I like a particular hotel here, based uh, the experience, if I go to another city, I would like to stay in a similar hotel. That might not be true all the time, but it might work. And so we decided to build a, uh, a small, um, thing, and um, so we use uh, the same models, I use similar models, and so I want to go to Berlin, and I happen to like uh, the, I'm a really rich person, and I stay all the time in the Mandarin. If it doesn't work, I blame the, uh oh yeah, sure, thanks. So I like to stay in the Mandarin Oriental in Paris, in, and I just get recommendations. So this system sort of gets the, the vector, and it's not only one um, feature I use. I use different features, uh, like semantic features also. But the main idea is that the, the, this vector we learn and try to recommend similar hotels in Berlin. So this is a the Mandarin Oriental. It's a, a really club hotel, really super duper hotel in Las Vegas, in Paris, 
and, and sort of like romantic luxury hotel. And it recommends me um, similar things. And, and sometimes the recommendations are not that good, but uh, they sort of work okay. And, and it, this is not a product, this is just a technology demonstration. And, um, and without saying anything, I can only, I think, say, I want to show you another thing, and I will be. Christopher, St. Christopher, Berlin, International. Uh, no, but I'm looking for something in Berlin, but in Paris. Because I'm, I'm looking for hotels in Paris that I like. Uh, but let's see if, if it is worth. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'm looking for a hotel I like, a hostel in, in Berlin, with a cheap th thing. And um, no, it gave me something really bad. Sometimes it do I cannot find it. But the, what I wanted to show is like if I add there a hotel that I have a model for, it will give me really similar. If I change to really a cheap one, a hostel or something like that, a backpacker hostel, it will give me also backpackers in Berlin. And I, we didn't say anything about the hotel type or anything, just there were some of the reviews and some semantic cat categories, and that's it. Um, so I'm going to conclude now. Um, where is it? Yep. Uh, so we we'll take takeaways. And so one is it's possible to use Python as a primary language for doing large data processing, or like big data, as you, some people call it. And the, perf the setup is not that, uh, I mean, it's good, but it's not perfect. There's some issues but it works well most of the time. And however, you have to keep your ecosystem sort of open, open-minded to, and you have to be open-minded so you can include more technologies. And look at ways, uh, nice ways to do that. And, and the last one is from the, uh, the last part of the talk. It's like reviews and it might contain more information that you, that you think, and it's good if, you, um, if you're working for, with reviews of anything, just, Check it out. Maybe you can get extra information or even something to amuse yourself. Um, so, and that's it. Question and thanks. Questions? Have you managed to go back into Word of Beckham to see what you can retrain to get the odd ones out? Sorry, what? Like, uh, you had some odd uh, results, right, with Word of Beckham. Uh huh. So why it uh, no like it's a, that's a, it's a black box, yeah. so you never know why. I mean, you can take a look at the data, but you really don't know. The question was if if uh, if I can know why it generate the, mo the model in, in that way, and the answer is it's just a black box model. So no, we just like you start running it and you pray for something good, and you try different parameters and you say, yeah, this works. What we did is like a, a um, for, for the recommendation engine, we sort of generated training sets or sort of like gold uh, fruit, and then we sort of compare it with different ways of training the model. So it's more like a um, really brute force approach. So we have a gold standard, and then we train several models and, and test everyone. Okay, there's another question here in the back. Uh, yes. Um, I wondered a bit, since you, you're using uh, Luigi, uh, but haven't mentioned uh, Snakebite, don't you use uh, Snakebite? So which is also from uh, Spotify and which is a pure HDFS client, yeah. but a pure implementation in, in Python. And particularly if you're using Luigi or working from command line, it's uh, by far uh, faster than the, 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 Java, uh, um, the Java client. We don't use it directly, uh, but I know Luigi has the several clients underneath, and I think one of those is a Snakebite. Yeah, but for some reason, the default client is the Hadoop Java client, and due to the JVM bootstrapping, it has some delay, yeah. and um, it's quite annoying. And uh, yeah, it's really a, um, a good tool, even if you're completely into Java and working on the command line. Uh, Snakebite is a really great tool. Yeah, we don't use it directly. We don't have any script using it directly. We do work with HDFS sometimes. We mostly um, use, uh, either when we use bash scripts, just a normal uh, binary that comes with the Hadoop distribution, or any client that the Luigi configuration uh, gives us, because you can get client, and then with the client you do whatever you want. OK, more questions, anyone? There's another one there.
So I, I thought this was a very interesting presentation. I I was thinking, have you played with applying it to other sources of information? So right now you looked at hotel reviews. Have you thought about or have you played with this in moving it somewhere else? Uh, I don't know, to what users say in forums about a particular topic or even books? Or have you thought about that? Yeah, I mean, we use this for reviews because that's the information we work for, right? But it's, it will be interesting. Some, uh, I know there are some researchers doing work to back for music uh, partitures and stuff and, and, and musical writing and stuff, and they're getting uh, nice results. And there are people using similar models, uh, not only work to back but other like embeddings, generation models to work in different and, and, and like get information that previously wasn't that you know that popular and thanks to the implementation so such a Jensen, um, you can now use it easily. So I just say if you want to try it out, it's super easy. You saw the code, go ahead and try it. Okay then, thank you for the nice talk. So thank you. Thank you.